It was the dawn of democracy in East Timor where delicate diplomacy and an international military force led to the birth of Asia's newest nation. In 1999, a UN-led referendum gave the East Timorese an opportunity to determine their own future. Habibi said you can have a vote for independence and the UN was invited to run it. And it was actually run by the UN. The ballot complete from start to finish was run by the UN. Um, the Australian Electoral Commission provided all the electoral material. You had 247 UN police, as they are now called, not CIFPOL, from all over the world. The UN police job, the, the um, mission statement was to advise the Indonesian police and protect the ballot boxes. Um, that was our job. The people of East Timor have spoken, voting overwhelmingly to break ties with Indonesia in favour of independence. But the province is tonight bracing for a violent backlash from pro-Indonesian militia. On the ballot day, uh, by three o'clock in the afternoon, I had 21 polling sites. By three o'clock in the afternoon, 14 of them were under attack in one way or another. And we got them all out. Other places got attacked and evacuated immediately and went back, but at least, it, but they were attacked after the ballot was finished. We were the only ones attacked on ballot day. Um, and we stayed from, from the first attack to the end, eight days. Uh, and we, we got out and we tried to patrol. We did what we could. Um, at 11.30 on the 4th of September, after the ballot, next door we had to phone the, the UN security officer and it was my counterpart ringing to tell me that he had been ordered to withdraw my security, withdraw his security from the UN at midday the next day and not see what happened. So that's when we evacuated the next morning. Under the eyes of Indonesia's military, gunfire on the streets of Dili. Pro-Jakarta militias on the rampage vent their anger over the referendum result. If the international community does not stop it, in the next few hours, tens of thousands of people will be dying. The UN Security Council called for a multinational force to restore peace and stability. International Force East Timor, or Interfet, arrived in September 1999. It included 22 countries led by Australia, with Major General Peter Cosgrove at the helm. My soldiers are all tremendously professional and I'm very proud of the restraint and the judgment and the discipline they've shown in what's been a very trying first few days. The smell of burning buildings still in the air and, and seeing the smoke, there was still a lot of smoke um, and, and smouldering buildings um, and that everything seemed really quite run down and, and, and there, that so much had been destroyed, you know, you could see it was such a, a beautiful country and, and was really, you could see just how much had just been torched on the way out. And, you know, that was, that was quite sad. These reporters had rung the British, the British reporters, they'd rung the Britain, British Embassy in England saying that the militia, possibly the Indonesians, were trying to kill them. So we got the word we had to get out and find them. We came across a, a checkpoint. The militias and the Indonesians would set up these checkpoints. When we hit this one, they were the troops that were looking for the, the uh, reporters. It was getting really tense, like, we knew we were close to somewhere where the reporters had been, or were expected to be. Um, so I got off the vehicle, the OC got off the vehicle to kind of communicate with the um, militia troops or the Indonesians. We were preparing to shoot. <laughs> it, was, it was getting close. And then an Indonesian officer yelled out, Chris, Brad, Turns out, the commander of the Indonesia, local Indonesian unit had been on a deployment to Australia and had trained with us in 2nd Cavalry. 
and was now, years later, in uh, a command position. And he recognised us. Um, so it was much back slapping and guns going down. And then one of my troops came forward and said, we got them, they're, they're in the back of the Type 2, they've snuck out. And, Righto, well, nice to see you again. <laughs> see you later. We were met and um, and the SAS uh, troop had set up a, uh, a harbour on, on probably the, the key ground or the highest point uh, near the port. And we went up there and, and you know, we, we really had no idea of the security situation. Uh, there was talk about significant numbers of militia uh, in the area. We established a defensive position up there um, with the troop and dug in, but there was nobody. It was a, it was a complete ghost town. And it was hard to work out what was going on because no one was there and the buildings were, but, and, and so we started patrolling uh, mostly in town at that point. Um, the SAS patrols went a bit further out and then, and then we followed them out and we were doing a bunch of uh, joint patrolling with them. And then uh, it started to happen. The, um, people started to return and they'd all been hiding in, in the jungle, in the hills. And um, all of a sudden, well, it wasn't all of a sudden, but over the, the afternoon, uh, we went from nobody to thousands and thousands of people. Uh, and um, and I remember we, we came off a of patrol and they were all um, congregating at, at the church. And we went down and, um, and they were just so, um, th there was so much emotion from them and they were so thankful and I you know I, I, I remember just having my hand shook for for hours. Our guys were instrumental in moving the first m major load of uh, relocation uh, or repatriation of um, uh, Timorese who had run from Suai across to um, Dili because when, when everything happened they all converged on Dili, a lot of them converged on Dili. So we'd use the Jarvis, HMA Jarvis Bay, the fast cat uh, catamaran and we did the loads of uh, the people to bring, relocate them back around to Suai so they're where they come from. So that was a big, you know, that was a really big, um, uh, it was a real boost because you're seeing people go back, it's like someone come in and wiped out Canberra, and you're coming back, you know, you've been away from your hometown for, for months, and you know, all of a sudden you're back, you know, the smiles on the faces, so you know, that, that, that was a really good thing. It came, became very evident to the squadron commander and myself that we had to de-escalate our mindset from war fighting to a, more of a peacekeeping concept so we could see that we needed to start to calm things down a little bit in ourselves and kind of de-escalate de this a little bit to to get more of a, uh, a peacekeeping um, waving like we instituted a wave policy all, all commanders would wave you could spot where two troop had been uh, the two troop troop sergeant had come up with this thing of winding his hand up and then coming up with the thumbs up and the kids used to run out and um, and so you knew oh well two trips been here. <laughs> so as part of our role we were doing um, civil military um, liaison so we would go out and and talk with the people, get a sort of a feel for how things were feeling in the marketplace, where the people were starting to move around and feel a little more safe. That particular photo was up in Baokau um, on the, uh, on the uh, northeastern side and the kids were gorgeous but you would have seen in that photo most of them weren't wearing shoes, a lot of the clothes were too big, they were aid clothes, 
you know, the hello missus everywhere you went and wanting chocolate and things, you know, it was all those things you hear was exactly what it was. But just this great spirit in the people, despite everything that had happened, there were not many kids that you would see that hadn't been touched by the deaths that had occurred in those last few days before T and I left. Um, yeah, it was yeah, it was quite quite confronting, really. The challenges were many, but so were the triumphs. What started as a critical intervention evolved towards self-governance. Interfet withdrew from East Timor in February 2000, when the transitional authority Untayet took over. I will be handing over the, uh, the role in this document that Interfet now plays to Untayet. Today, we are celebrating a very significant occasion, the entry of the peacekeeping force of the Untayet. In East Timor, uh, in the context of um, the Interfet to sort of uh, Operation Tanager sort of epoch was, um, you know, important for a number of reasons. At that level and at that scale, it's the first time that we had projected into an operational theatre um, since the Vietnam War. That confidence building that come, came from that operational experience still holds true today and still informs much of our decisions, particularly how we interact in the region how we think about force projection, how we understand places like Darwin as they relate to access into the region. So that's sort of the high level stuff. Um, also, I think the really impressive thing about the East Timor experience was the way at which our soldiers were able to rapidly adapt to that environment in terms of, you know, a heightened uh, perception around that experience as it was anticipated relative to things like the threat and the operating environment which quickly evolved into what was concurrently also a humanitarian operation, a stability operation, in some uh, corners and in some experiences, a security operation relative to an armed and active threat. And then also how we then transition to support uh, a new government in terms of running free and fair elections in the context of the 2001 um, election of uh, the new president and the new prime minister. So. When you think about it, from 99 through to 2001, the nuance and the agility that the Australian Army had to demonstrate in the period where they hadn't deployed operationally at that level for nearly 25 years, is just profoundly impressive. And the reason that was successful was because of our training system and our people. The nation achieved independence in 2002 and was renamed Timor-Leste. 2006, uh, East Timor went off again. There were uh, fighting in streets and there were people, the bad guys are coming out of the hills and doing things to the good guys, so to speak. Basically, we got a small team together to do the other stuff. On the Kanimbala, went through Darwin and then sailed into to Dili um, in support of the army who were going in to take the airport and make the place safe again. But you could see everything and Dili was burning again, which was pretty sad. Black smoke coming out of everywhere and you just think, oh, really? But within a couple of days, the army had taken control, we moved the ship alongside. Um, every now and again somebody would shoot at us with shotguns and stuff, so we were told to keep below the ballistic armour on the side of the ship, so you just had to watch what you're doing. In 2006, Australian troops returned to East Timor to help restore order after a mutiny split East Timor's new army. At its peak, the International Stabilisation Force was made up of more than a thousand soldiers. East Timor's Prime Minister Shanana Guzmao says international help was needed to put an end to the widespread violence. On behalf of the government and the people of Timor-Leste, I give thanks to Australia and New Zealand and the brave soldiers that serve it with ASF for helping us achieve stability. As a result, we now look to the future with optimism and hope. We're out in uh, at Sabo, which is uh, to the south of Gleno. We're here to uh, meet with the local leaders and uh, to conduct basic security patrols, uh, just to monitoring the security situation in the area. We'll also talk to the, the local Timorese police force and maybe even their defence force if uh, they're around. We come out here to talk to the local leaders to find out what's going on in the area and if there's any way we can help them um, and to maintain our own uh, situational awareness for this area. And I say also that Timor people never forget about what Australian 
people have done in East Timor, what the ISF have done in East Timor, even in Indonesian time when then, uh, we had a war in 1999, Australian came over to East Timor to help us, we never forgot about it. Australian troops stationed in East Timor will this morning begin packing up and pulling out. The Australian-led International Stabilisation Force, made up of almost 400 soldiers, most of them Australians, is shutting up shop. Sarah Everingham reports from Dili. Australian soldiers in East Timor are packing up and heading home. The withdrawal of the Australian-led force is expected to be finished by April next year. A separate Defence Force program that's been helping train East Timor's army will remain in the country.